Malaysians in 2050 will not just be older, poorer, sicker and childless, they will also be homeless, according to DM Analytics Chief Economist Dr. Mohamed Abdul Khalid. We sit down to talk to him about the sort of structural changes Malaysia needs to make in order to avoid that fate, or whether he feels the country is already too far gone. So, uh, based on your report, Malaysia in 2050 will be older, poorer, weaker, without children. So what are the things the government should do or can could actually do to create a better retirement retiring environment for Malaysians? All right. Actually I forgot one to add one thing there. Homeless. Ah. By twenty fifty, not only we poor, sick, we have to work without children, but we're gonna be homeless. Many things can be done, but I will look at it from two angles. What need to be done to the current generation now so that the the issue of aging will be less uh, 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 can be mitigated in the future, number one, what we can do for the younger generation now and what should we do for the elder generation right now. So two groups. Eh? Why I focus on the younger ones? One of the biggest uh, issue facing the aging uh, uh, society are those on healthcare. And Malaysia are not healthy. Size numbers are smokers, hypertension, high blood, diabetic, many. And even among young kids, about 12% of our kids now underweight, now the 13% is overweight and the level of anemic, uh, usually we call it lack of iron, is one, one in three. This link to our food policy. Food in Malaysia, there's a study is done, affordable nutrition, uh, nutritious food is expensive. This compared to other countries. Eh? It's, it, it is available but it's not affordable. You must make these two uh, uh, together. It's affordable and it's av available on food uh, uh, policy. Other on health uh, policy, smoking is a big uh, issue. Not only primary smoking, but secondary smoking, second hand. Eh? This also need uh, to be addressed. In terms of tax, our tax on cigarettes is still low compared to many developed uh, countries. The problem is for them, well, mostly we're all going to get old. We're going to get old and poor. Few things we can mitigate this. One is on the pension reform. Pension reform, first, we work too short relative to other countries. We retire at 60 but you can withdraw at 55. Other countries do not allow this. So are you suggesting that we should actually expand the retirement age? Yes, definitely. You should expand the uh, retirement age. You should increase this. People will argue, oh, cannot, you cannot increase because then you give less chances to the younger one. We have less younger people. In fact, by 2050, the number, absolute number of children going to be less than in 2030 or, or uh, uh, even uh, uh, compared to older generations. Now, um, focusing on just unemployment, what you say that unemployment insurance is effective, but why is it effective? Wouldn't it actually create a society that dependent on the government? Why we need unemployment insurance? Now, 4 in 10 Malaysian workers do not have any insurance. Do not have any either EPF or uh, public uh, uh, JPA eh? or QAP. It's not covered, not covered by LTAT, not covered by anything, number one. Number two, even if you're covered, you, get not, you don't have savings. Bangara says nine out of ten cannot survive more than six months. What unemployment insurance would do is to give you a breathing space. So if you got fired, you got a removed, company shut down, the owner chabot, we pay you from your contribution, eh? not from the government contribution, from your contribution, so you can survive three to six months. You also mentioned that um, the focus of being high income, top 20 country is pointless. Could you elaborate on that? You do not want to be a high income country. You want to be a developed country, which means you're, progr you're progressive in all sphere. You take care of everyone. You are a productive country. You move from consumption base to productive investment. Uh, you respect democracy, for instance. You ensure there's no one left behind, wealth is shared, equal society, inclusive society, that's what you want. Fresh graduates, they are facing problems as well. Unemployment is one thing and also stagnant in terms of income growth. Um, minus inflation, the wage growth is actually negative in Malaysia. You say the whole ideology needs to be changed. Yeah. So talk us through what kind of structural change we have to see in Malaysia. Because we are pro-rich. We are pro-capital. In Malaysia, for every one dollar that we generate, bulk of it goes to corporates. 
uh, operating uh, uh, surplus. Very little goes to workers. Even compared to Singapore, Singapore give more to workers than give to business owners. That's number one. We do not share. Number two, why I, so, I say we pro-rich, pro-capital. If you earn capital in this country, you're not taxed. You buy and sell shares, you don't pay tax. You buy and sell uh, property after five years, you don't pay tax. Even let's say you, you, you make half a, half a million from selling shares, half a million selling properties. But you make half a million working, you pay top tax, uh, top marginal, uh, marginal rate. That's not fair. In fact, if you poor in Malaysia, income tax is progressive. Uh, capital tax doesn't exist. But consumption tax, GSC, is regressive. If you, if you poor, you pay. You pay more, yeah. You pay, you pay GST. Rich people do not spend that much in terms of the income compared to the poor. Mm. So this tax system, fiscal system, even the ideology that you work hard, you benefit meritocracy, it penalizes the poor.